The St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative presents the Damascene Podcast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Father John Summers, the Headmaster of the St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative, with our 10th recording on the book of Daniel. In chapter 9, we read, In the first year of Darius, the son of Asuerus, of the seed of the Medes, who reigned over the kingdom of the Chaldeans, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, which was, of the, was the word of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah, even seventy years for the accomplishment of the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face toward the Lord God, to seek him diligently by prayer and supplications, with fastings and sackcloth. And I prayed to the Lord my God, and confessed, and said, O Lord, the great and wonderful God, keeping thy covenant and thy mercy to them that love thee, and to them that keep thy commandments, we have sinned, we have done iniquity, we have transgressed, and we have departed and turned aside from thy commandments and from thy judgments. And we have not hearkened to thy servants, the prophets, who spoke in thy name to our kings and our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To thee, O Lord, belongs righteousness, and to us confusion of face, as at this day to the men of Judah, and to the dwellers in Jerusalem, and to all Israel, to them that are near, and to them that are far off in all the earth, wherever thou hast scattered them, for the sin which they committed. In thee, O Lord, is our righteousness, and to us belongs confusion of face, and to our kings, and to our princes, and to our fathers, for as much as we have sinned. To thee, the Lord our God, belong compassions and forgivenesses, whereas we have departed from thee. Neither have we hearkened to the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by the hands of his servants, the prophets. Moreover, all Israel have transgressed thy law and have refused to hearken to thy voice. So the curse has come upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us great evils, such as have not happened under the whole heaven, according to what has happened in Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all these evils have come upon us, yet we have not besought the Lord our God that we might turn away from our iniquities and have understanding in all thy truth. The Lord also has watched and brought the evils upon us, For the Lord our God is righteous in all his work, which he has executed, but we have not hearkened to his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought us thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and made us to thyself a name, as as at this day, we have sinned, we have transgressed. O Lord, thy mercy is over all. Let, I pray thee, thy wrath turn away, and thine anger from thy city Jerusalem, even thy holy mountain." For we have sinned, and because of our iniquities and those of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach among all that are round about us. And now, O Lord, our, uh, and now, O Lord our God, hearken to the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine on thy desolate sanctuary. For thine own sake, O Lord, incline thine ear, O my God, and hear. Open thine eyes, and behold our desolation, and that of thy city on which thy name is called, For we do not bring our pitiful case before thee on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of thy manifold compassions, O Lord. Hearken, O Lord, be propitious. O Lord, attend, O Lord. Delay not, O my God, for thine own sake. For thy name is called upon thy city and upon thy people. And while I was yet speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel, and bringing my pitiful case before the Lord my God, concerning the holy mountain. Yea, while I was yet speaking in prayer, behold, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, came flying, and he touched me about the hour of the evening sacrifice. And he instructed me and spoke with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to impart to the understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication, the word came forth, and I am come to tell thee, for thou art a man much beloved. Therefore consider the matter, understand the vision." Seventy weeks have been determined upon thy people and upon the holy city 
for sin to be ended and to seal up transgressions and to blot out iniquities and to make atonement for iniquities and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal the vision and the prophet and to anoint the most holy. And thou shalt know and understand that from the going forth of the command for the answer and for the building of Jerusalem until Christ the Prince there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks and then the time shall return and the street shall be built and the wall and the times shall be exalted. And after the sixty-two weeks, the anointed one shall be destroyed, and there is no judgment in him. And he shall destroy the city and the sanctuary with the prince that is coming. They shall be cut off with a flood. And to the end of the war, which is rapidly completed, he shall appoint the city to desolations. And one week shall establish the covenant with many. And in the midst of the, we- in the midst of the week, my sacrifice and drink offering shall be taken away, and on the temple shall be the abomination of desolations, and at the end of the time an end shall be put to the desolation. The end of the reading. The prophet Jeremiah had prophesied that there would be 70 years until the people returned from Babylon. Uh, if you're interested, that's found in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11 in the Septuagint. In chapter 9, Daniel prays and fasts for the people of Israel. We should pay close attention to the words of his prayer as they are very instructive as to what sort of spirit we ought to have when we pray. He acknowledges their iniquity. He makes intercession on behalf of the people and for himself. He sees what has happened to the children of Israel in light of God's providence. This is made very clear in verse 11 when he says, quote, Moreover, all Israel have transgressed thy law and have refused to hearken to thy voice. So the curse has come upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him, end quote. As we have stressed again and again, the driving force of history is spiritual. Man chooses to either cooperate with God or to cooperate with the devil. God wishes for salvation for man and consequently sends difficulty and deprivation. Daniel does not justify themselves, but puts all his trust in God, acknowledging their iniquities and asking God for help and forgiveness. While he is praying, the archangel Gabriel is once again sent to him. He touches him and instructs him, saying, At the beginning of thy supplication the word came forth, and I am come to tell thee, for thou art a man much beloved. Therefore consider the matter, understand the vision. Precisely because Daniel prays and fasts with faith and humility, he is vouchsafed the vision of seventy weeks. We have to ask ourselves, what is this vision? Archangel Gabriel says, Recall that he, what he said. He says, Seventy weeks have been determined upon thy people and upon the holy city for sin to be ended and to seal up transgressions and to blot out iniquities and to make atonement for iniquities. It is crucial here to understand what the prophet Daniel means when he says seventy weeks. By week, he means a period of seven years. So by seventy weeks, he means 490 years. Thus, there would, be, there would be 490 years to blot out the iniquities of the people and to make atonement and to anoint the Most Holy. But we have to ask, 490 years from when? To answer this, we ought to look at Second Ezra chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Since the Brenton translation of the Septuagint does not include this book, for reasons that are too lengthy to go into here, we will look at the text given in the Orthodox Study Bible. There we read, quote, Some of the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nethanim, came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. They came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was the seventh year of the king. End quote. This is the year that Artaxerxes commissioned Ezra to rebuild Jerusalem, that is, 458 BC. Thus, the note in the Orthodox Study Bible reads as follows. Quote, According to Hippolytus, Daniel's vision concerned the time when the temple would be rebuilt, as well as the time of the coming of the Messiah. First, the Jews would return and resume sacrifice 
after 70 years of captivity. Having mentioned therefore 70 weeks, and having divided them into two parts, in order that what was spoken by him to the prophet might be better understood, he proceeds thus, until Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, which make forty-nine years. It was in the twenty-first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign that Daniel saw these things in Babylon. Hence, the forty-nine years added to the twenty-one make up the seventy years of which the blessed Jeremiah spoke. Second, Jesus the Messiah would be crucified in A.D. 30, about 490 years, that is 70 weeks, after Artaxerxes commissioned Ezra to rebuild Jerusalem in 458 B.C. End quote. It's a, if we really think about this, it's absolutely amazing how precise, how accurate Daniel's prophecy is here. In all of this, we begin to see the purpose of all of these visions. Through his prophet, God reveals the causes of history, what will unfold, both to the Jewish people, setting forth in prophecy what prophecy what empire will rule, rule and when, leading up to the coming of Christ. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, let me reread that sentence. Through his prophet, God reveals the causes of history, what will unfold, both to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles, setting forth in prophecy what empire will rule and when, leading up to the coming of Christ. Every empire, whether the Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, the Greek, or the Roman, will come and go. The only enduring kingdom is the kingdom that shall never be destroyed, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is, the Church. In a sense, in considering all of this, we begin to see that every Orthodox Christian is called to make a study of history, to see the hand of God in history. The Holy Prophet Daniel is able to see all of these things through divine vision. In our small way, too, we too must come to understand these things. As we have stressed again and again, and as we have seen again and again, all of these spiritual achievements are achievements of faith. With this in mind, let's say the dismissal hymn of the saints to close today's recording. Great are the achievements of faith. In the fountain of flame as by the water of rest, the three holy children rejoiced. And the prophet Daniel proved a shepherd of lions as of sheep. By their prayers, O Christ God, save our souls. Amen. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. To donate to the initiative, please visit orthodoxlearninggoc.com slash donate. May God bless you. Have mercy.